What's going on guys? Chase on two wheels here for another Wreck Bike Rebuild Garage video. And uh, if you're wondering why I'm on the video and not Brian, then you probably didn't watch to the end of the last episode where this happened. Man, I'm running out of stuff to ask. How much of a shit show do you think this is going to be when you leave? Well, they don't know about that. Well, they do now. <laughs> I guess so if people actually watch all the way to the yeah, end. Okay, yeah. okay, we'll do that. Okay. Outro crew, I got a little surprise for you. May not make you too happy, might make you a little sad. You may not care either way, but this is my last episode here at the Wreck Bike Rebuild Garage. I am moving on to cooler and better places, I should say. So yeah, that was actually Brian's last episode on this show. And before we get into what is happening in this episode, I did want to handle a few things beforehand. So guys, first off, uh, we've known that this is happening for months now. Brian told me months ago that he had made the decision for him and his family that they were going to be moving. So if you guys noticed, we've been talking to you guys about like we have this deadline coming. That deadline was Brian moving. So we obviously tried to get the build as far as we could while he was here. Uh, he even gave me his 30 day heads up before the actual move happened. So guys, it goes without saying that we are super thankful for all the time that Brian gave us here on the show. It's been awesome to be able to work with him on some pretty amazing projects. Brian, if you guys don't know, came onto the team at about halfway through season two of Wreck by Rebuild when we were working on the ZX-10. We did the Bobber together, we did the Panigale together, and obviously, as you guys have been seeing, we've done all three of these CBRs up to this point. The amount of knowledge that that man gave me and you guys via this show has been invaluable, and I hope that you guys have gained at least some of the knowledge that I know I have while we've had him here. I'm super proud of all the projects we did together. And uh, like I said, I wish Brian and his family nothing but the best moving forward. That being said, this is a show and we still have a bike unfinished. So I wanted to touch on the way the show is gonna be running for the rest of this season. Now, as you guys know, the CBR 600 is mostly done but we do have some other stuff to do with it. Uh, the way this show is gonna be running now is very similar to how this show ran when it started with seasons one and two. I'm gonna be doing all the work of the camera stuff. I'm gonna be doing all the work on the motorcycles. And I will say, I'm very interested to see, you know, I've worked with Brian for over four years now, hands-on with these projects. When I started working with Brian, I don't know if you guys watched season two with our ZX-10. When I called Brian in, it was because I didn't know how to start that build because it was such a big project. So I ended up just taking stuff apart randomly. Since then, I've had so much more experience like taking bikes apart and working on them and doing upgrades. So if I'm gonna be honest, I'm really excited to see all this information that I've been given, how does that change how I tackle builds? Now, that's not really gonna affect this build that much because it's already mostly done, but I'm really excited for future builds to see how it kind of modifies how we do it. And guys, with all that information uh, out there, I think we're ready to get this episode started. So let's go over what the goal is for today's episode. So guys, our primary goal in today's episode is to get the exhaust test mounted, to get the brakes both rear and front bled, and we also have a brake pressure switch. Uh, we're gonna talk about why pressure switch, and we do have a slight modification from what the previous plan was. I'm gonna talk you guys through that first. So guys, when it comes to the exhaust and containing all the heat that the exhaust has, our original plan was to wrap it in a fiberglass wrap, but after doing a little bit more research and a little bit more thinking, I have decided to not do that. Uh, after looking at some of the photos of the uh, fiberglass wrap, I don't really like the way that looks, and I don't think that's really gonna fit with our motorcycle here. So, did some research and found on eBay the original heat shield, which is what we have right here. 
We're gonna use that, but we're gonna have to modify it because the original heat shield tags into the rear set here. And since we have these new Vortex rear sets on, the heat shield's not gonna be able to attach into those. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of modification, but the guys and I have done some testing and we think we have a pretty solid plan for that. Uh, it involves using this rivet gun, which I don't think I've ever used before. So that should be pretty interesting. I don't think we're going to get the actual Yoshi exhaust on. If you guys didn't know, we have a Yoshi exhaust for this motorcycle. Um, if you missed one of those episodes. So we got that to install. And like I said, we also have our brake stuff. So the first thing I have to do is get the like mid pipe installed, roughly installed, not like everything, but it attaches, attaches into a bolt right here get that in right there and at that point we can kind of like shimmy in the exhaust heat shield and kind of start working with what do we have to cut off of it and where do we need to attach trey what did you say this clamp was called band clamp or b a worm, a worm what worm gear. worm gear not a worm hole <laughs> just kidding we have the heat shield right we cannot use this mounting point we can use this mounting point we are going to have to cut the heat shield so it will fit behind the rear set. We are going to rivet this to the back of the heat shield and that will attach around the exhaust. This is our workaround and of course we're going to paint this black. We're going to do that at the end of this day, but this is going to be a two part day. So there's that. So let's get this exhaust installed and then we'll go from there. So guys, I uh, have the exhaust heat shield test mounted. Just got a little washer in here holding it up. Now, this is gonna be attached, like I said, to the exhaust here. Our original plan was to cut the heat shield to fit in here more, but now that I've got it like temp installed, I think we're gonna have enough clearance with everything to not have to cut it, which is obviously ideal. It was made like that for a reason. So. I think instead of cutting it, I'm just going to do the same riveting stuff that I was talking about earlier. We're going to paint it black and see how it goes. Worst case scenario, I can cut it down the road if I end up needing to. So it's like salt, you know, once you do it, you can't go back, but you can solve problems before you get there. So um, I am going to dismount all of this. I am going to make a mark on here because I'm going to need to drill a hole for the riveting. The only thing I'm going to keep in mind is making sure I get a clean piece of pipe I obviously don't want down here where the pipe is gonna be like overlapping and stuff like that. So I'm gonna make a little mark for where I need to drill a hole and we'll try this whole riveting thing. I'm sure the content's gonna be riveting. I'm so sorry for that. It riveted. Thanks, yeah. Trey. Riveting content. Absolute rivation. All right, dudes, check it. Now our little wormhole is uh, attached to our exhaust shield. How cool is that? What you're hearing these little noises is this loose hardware. All right, that was riveting, honestly. All jokes aside, all jokes intended. All right, so if you guys have calmed down from all the riveting content, um, 
it's funny how such simple things can be complicated in your brain. All right, so uh, now that we've got our little mock-up piece done, I'm going to test assemble it just like it was, just to make double sure that everything is looking good. At that point, we will then paint this thing. So let's mock it up, make sure we didn't F any S up, and we will be back. All right, guys, I've got the mock-up done, and because originally I think the goal was to cut it right here, these two holding points would have been fine. This rivet's working really well, as you guys can see up here is like, it's super stable. The problem is now that I've decided to go full heat shield, at the bottom we've still got some movement. But here's the thing, the riveting thing works so well, I'm like, I'll just do another pop rivet at the bottom, the same clamping thing, and that way we will be super secure. So uh, I'm gonna run through that really quick. We'll do another test and we'll make sure it works and then we're off to the races. That's an inside, that's a joke because this is a race bike. guys second rivet is on and check out the stability and as you guys can see like you can't even see the rivets and that's before we paint the damn thing black so this thing is just gonna blend into nothingness what we're gonna do now I'm gonna take all that stuff off and then uh, we have this you guys probably know what this is high temp like engine enamel with acrylic paint you guys probably paint your grills and stuff with that. Oh, we're gonna paint this exhaust thing because as you guys can tell, that just looks, it looks out of place for what we're trying to do here. You take some Scotch-Brite and just like mat it out and uh -huh. then it looks intentional and it matches with all the silver hardware. That sounds like too much work so I can just You're gonna have to scuff it up anyways to get good adhesion, so you might as well. Nah, I'm just gonna paint it. <laughs> All right, let's go outside and paint this thing. Bo, are you sure you don't want any black enamel yeah. paint on the bike? Absolutely, 100%. Okay, just want to double check because I really feel like there's we could benefit from some black accents on the bike. Are you sure? I think it has enough. Okay, just, you know, I'm just looking out for you, bud. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Always here for you. You guys want to say goodbye to the silver because you'll never see it again. Oh, in typical Rick by Creebold fashion. Now it's raining. Cool. Are you done? All right, guys, so uh, we got one coat of the enamel stuff on or whatever the hell it's called. So uh, we're gonna do another coat whenever the rain eventually stops, but so that we're not sitting here constantly recording audio, we're gonna cut to day two where that thing is painted. See you then. All right, guys, back at it again for day two of this episode, and we have a finished heat shield painted. So guys, as you can see, uh, we got the painted parts done. Just didn't even paint the back because nobody's gonna see that. 
Um, I ended up doing an extra coat, uh, so I think that's just two coats, but honestly, I think it looks really good. And Put it, that over there. Ah! <laughs> and again, this is the stuff we use. This is the outcome. All right, guys, so now that we got that painted, we can go into the actual exhaust installation. So the way this is gonna work is, you guys can see, we've it looks like we've done a little like paper mache project over here. Uh, but what's gonna end up happening, so you guys can't really see right now, but a stock CBR 600 has this giant piece of metal heat shielding that runs along the undertail. When you update to a Yoshimura exhaust, you are able to remove that, but what they do is give you this like heat reflective tape, which is what this is. Yoshi also gives you these like little templates for cutting it out. And if you cut all of those pieces out, it actually fits perfectly up in here. So uh, obviously in order to get to that, I'm gonna have to remove this mid pipe. I'm gonna clean it with some of this, uh, acetone that Trey has so conveniently placed here for me. Once I get that cleaned, I'm gonna do the stickers and then we'll start all the pipe installation. So we gotta start out with uh, doing a little sticker project. Right, guys heat shielding is installed check that out yoshi gives you templates for this and i think those are fine but like i would only use them as a blanket you get a ton of extra material that you can then just cut little tiny pieces so we ended up just cutting small little bits out in order to get little areas covered i would just say like templates to start and then just like the little pieces in there whenever you need them. Uh, heat shielding is done. That should keep this person's butt safe. So now we get the fun part of getting the mid pipe and the exhaust installed along with our painted heat shield piece. So uh, that's what we're gonna do now. So we've ran into a little bit of a hiccup uh, getting this installed. I've got the, this is the one hard point that is stock for this. And then we have the rivets here. And for some reason, I don't know what's happening now because we, you saw early in the video, we test fit this, but now it's touching the swing arm. So what we're gonna have to do is put some tape on this area and we're just gonna have to cut a little relief out in this area. And hopefully after we modify it, we can put it back on here and we can just keep trucking along so fingers crossed that that works out all right guys disregard that uh previous chase here's what i ended up doing uh i think because i don't know how this happened but because i didn't tighten this one first this started cutting in there, but now as you guys can see, like this thing is a piece. It is part of the motorcycle now. We've got a hard point in the subframe. Then we have our two rivets here that have worked out really well. Uh, from here, we're gonna move on to installing the rear set so we can do the whole rear brake stuff. Let's get to it. guys we have the rear set installed look at the look at that brake res that is slick all right so now uh what we got to do is install this slick looking tst integrated tail light that will go up just like that it should be pretty simple and because we're using that and because we have the rear sets 
We're gonna have to do some pressure banjo stuff, but I'll talk about that after I get the uh, tail light installed and I'll show you guys why we need to do what we're gonna do. Tail light install, let's go. All right guys, so tail light, incredibly easy to install. TST Industries does a phenomenal job with that stuff. So here's what we have to do now. As you guys saw, the blinkers left and right work, but because we have race rear sets, uh, the stock rear set typically has a little switch in there that lets the rear brake know it's being used, which will turn the brake light on. But if you go to race rear sets, they don't have that. And this is going to be a street legal motorcycle. So as you guys can see, this banjo bolt, which will replace this guy. So typically this little plug goes straight into the little brake piece here. But as you can see, our rear set doesn't have that. So I am going to uh, install this banjo bolt into here, solder this cable into this wire, get it tucked in and looking all nice. And then at that point, we should be able to get some brake fluid in the rear brake reservoir because it's a pressure regulated thing. So it needs the pressure to activate that switch. And hopefully we'll have a working uh, rear brake here in a minute. Let's find out. guys we uh just got the soldering done on the banjo bolt switch looks pretty clean if i will say so for myself now that that is done uh the important thing now is to make sure it actually works so uh i'm going to uh bleed the rear brake and uh get the res uh filled up then we can actually test the pressure ability to see if it works so uh we'll get that bled and then we will all cross our butts and fingers All right, guys, it's the moment we've all held our butts for. We have a filled reservoir. I think I've bled this thing correctly. There's no juices leaking out of the motorcycle. Bike is turned on and there's a brake light. Please be bright. Hey! Okay, so uh, the bat or the tail light is temporary. You have to install this with the fairings that are in there that you guys haven't got to see yet. So, final thing we got to do is do what we just did with that with the front one. So we're gonna bleed the front brakes, and I think we're good. Let's let's bleed the front brakes. All right, ladies and gents, we have brake fluid, we have a lever, we have brakes, we have brakes. The only thing we have left, install this guy with that hanger, and then might get a little cheeky, a uh, little turn on and rev, maybe. We'll see. Uh, installing the muffler shouldn't be that big of a deal, but I did see some people had to drop it down, so we'll have to see if that is uh, the case with ours, but uh, let's find out. Let's get an exhaust installed. All right, guys, so as you probably just saw, tried slipping on the old Yosh, um, and unfortunately, to get it lined up correctly, it comes too high. Luckily, uh, TST has already thought of this stuff and they include, as you guys can see here, this little lowering hardware. So you basically use these little black brackets 
here on the mid pipe for one and then you use two right there to lower the exhaust and as you can see it's kind of adjustable here so gonna have to install these then i can go get the rest of the stuff installed once we get the get it lowered Guys, it was a pain in the ass, but there's a Yoshi exhaust on the CBR 600. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Also, the heat shield now is, if you can, I don't know if you guys can see the crevice that is in between. So what it seems like happened was when we installed the lowering brackets, it shifted everything and now the heat shield is touching there. I don't know what the solution for that is, and that's going to be a problem for another day, Chase. But today, we have the Yoshi installed and the bike can crank up. So I think we should have a, I think we should crank it up, see what it sounds like, have a little excitement and end this day out. Hopefully you guys are okay. Are you guys, we're okay with cranking the bike up? Okay. All right. Uh, first up, montage of that, then crank up that and go. Yoshi on a 2008. I mean, like the bike has, like the engine has had stuff put on it. So like, should we let it just idle for a little while to see if it continues, if the oil continues? All right, so we're just gonna like let her idle for a second or for a little while. The black does, the black uh, yeah. heat shield looks good though. Good. Especially once the fairings are on and they're like right here. All right guys, so good news. The exhaust sounds freaking dope. Uh, it seems like the bike's not smoking anymore, thankfully, cause that was, that's all we need is a smoky bike. So I'm gonna get the bike rolled back in here and I was hoping next episode we could do the fairings cause we've had these awesome looking fairings up here. So if we're able to figure out all the other stuff, maybe we can do fairings next episode as well as these tiddly little, tiddly, piddly, piddly little things that we still have to do on here uh, that are just come up. So let me get the bike rolled in here and then uh, we'll finish this video up. So we've got a few more things to do on the CBR 600 as well as the fairings. So what I'm going to hope to do is I'm either going to do these little piddly things off camera and I'll tell you guys how, what ended up happening on the next episode where we install the fairings. That's probably going to be the easiest thing for us to do so we can diagnose the stuff, but we'll definitely let you guys know whatever happens. Hopefully one more day and this bike will be rideable. Please, baby Jesus. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more of it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to win this motorcycle, over at WBRGarage.com is where you do it at. Five bucks, you get 10 entries. Two times the entry. You guys go check out the website. I'm Chase on Two Wheels. This has been Rick Bikery Bull Garage, and I'll see you on the next one. Later. Oh. Outro crew. Everything is falling around us. I don't know what's happening, uh, but uh, thank you for getting to the outro crew. Make sure to put OC in your comment. Let us know what you thought about the sound of the exhaust. I think it sounds great. Oh my good God. I think it sounds great. Love you guys a little bit longer. We'll see you on the next one. What is happening here?